Media outlets have a reputation for dishing out bad fitness advice. Unfortunately, in this case, it's no different. As usual, if I see stuff like this, it's always good to make it a teaching moment. But before we get started, I have a gift for you. 30 days filled with kettlebell workouts for free. Check the first link in the description. Grüezi miteinander, Gregory von Lebestag hier. Now the funny thing with this kettlebell workout is that the coach is giving the two TV hosts two dumbbells instead of two kettlebells. The reason? I don't really know. Yes, there is overlap between dumbbell and kettlebell exercises, especially when it comes to the grind. For example, a press or a squat, you can do it with either a kettlebell or a dumbbell. But doing kettlebell specific exercises like the kettlebell swing with the dumbbell is just a complete waste of your time. So let's check out the workout. The first exercise is a thruster. Watch. Push your hips down and back, sitting okay. down in your chair. And then in one smooth move, drive it up and press your dumbbell up towards the sky. Yeah. That is your T right there, your thruster exercise. And this is because we're yes. making like a T, right? You like can make a T. Tea. You can definitely bring it out and take it up. Yes. Tea? Is that for So you're working your or thrusters. Or is it T for yeah. thrusters? The thruster is a great exercise, but you have to know the biomechanics of it. First of all, the TV host is asking the coach if she can do a T with her arms to stabilize the weight. The coach says yes, I would say no. You want to always keep your elbows close to the body when you are working with a kettlebell. And if I tell you that this is okay, I am programming faulty movement patterns that you have to deprogram when you learn it the proper way. So let's check out the movement pattern of the thruster. It is a front squat combined with a press. Now, what these guys are doing wrong is first of all, they are engaging either into a back squat now the weight is in front of me, not inside my center of mass. I feel it in my back and then I come back up. That's not the proper way to do it. Or the other problem, and that's a lot of beginners do that wrong, is they are shifting the weight towards the balls of their feet instead of their heels. You want to understand that once you do a thruster or a squat in that regard with a kettlebell, that it is a front squat because I have the weight in front of me. I want to keep my upper body as upright as possible. Now we take a look at exercise number two, which I would call a row. The coach calls it a so-called underhand row. Okay. So bring it right close to your leg and your underhand grip row, all you're gonna do is just pull your elbow back. And we're trying to keep a flat back with you. Keeping these, right? a nice flat back, your knees are soft, so you're taking it out of your back and you're just pulling it back. So this is an awesome exercise to work your back as well as the biceps, the front part of your arm. Ooh, and this is the you. Yeah. Now I've already touched upon the idea that you always wanna keep the weight inside your center of mass. You do this by placing the kettlebell right alongside the middle of your foot. Now I'm not a big fan of this underhand grip because this stresses my biceps. And when I roll, I focus on a big muscle right here that is a lat. And this big muscle is able to handle a lot of weight. So if I make the mistake of using heavy weight because I think my big muscle can handle it and I use an improper grip, I might stress or put the stress on the wrong muscle. I have the kettlebell between my legs. Now I'm shifting the whole body a little bit to my left leg. Now I grab the kettlebell like this and as I turn it up, I rotate a little bit. And as I come up, I feel my lats working, putting the kettlebell back down. And then I'm switching if I do a so-called hand-to-hand -hand row. And I always wanna pull the elbow as far up as I can. And I wanna feel my lats engaged. And the final exercise that is worth noting is, of course, the kettlebell swing. Feet up about hip width apart this time. Okay. Shoulders are away from your ears, so think about taking your bow as you take your dumbbell back and then just thrust through your hips. This could be Allowing it to raise up. Hold on tight, Mel. No, no, hold on tight. I gotta hold on really tight. <laughs> there you go. Everyone so that's helping back. to work through the back side of your body. Oh, that is your like kettlebell. First, let me demonstrate how you do a dumbbell swing. You do it like this. You don't do it at all because I told you in the beginning that doing a kettlebell swing with a dumbbell is a waste of your time. One of the USPs of the kettlebell swing is reinforcing this hip hinge movement pattern. In order to properly do this, you wanna use the right tool as well as the right execution of the exercise. So let's check out the basics of the swing. What I see wrong with many beginners, and there's no exception in this video, is that we are working way too much with our arms. So then it becomes a so-called, I call it a ballistic upright row. So your arms do all the work 
and your hips are doing nothing. The idea of the swing to use a lot of momentum, use the inertia and the kinetic energy of the kettlebell, propulse it upward, then keep a loose grip, and then let gravity do its thing. I'm not interfering as the kettlebell comes back down. I wait till my arms make contact with the body again, and then I go back into the hinge and explode back up. So it looks like this. On a final note, I want to make two things very clear. Number one, you can see that these hosts as well as the coach are not wearing the proper shoes. If you wear these running shoes that have this cushioning effect, your body will receive a distorted signal that is coming from the bottom of your heels. That is a problem when you want to lift weights. Secondly, I'm not critiquing the skill of the TV host. I don't care how much of a good coach you are, when you teach an exercise for the first time to a beginner, it'll always look fairly Bad. So here's the next step that you have to do. You have to like the video, consider subscribing, share it with the friends, and then check out this video. Maybe this is the first time you're checking out this channel. We're all about kettlebells. Then go watch this video right now where I teach you the ins and outs of kettlebell training. It's perfectly suited for beginners. So go watch it right now.